What defines indigenous art? It's the various forms of art that usually produces its designs and symbols from the spirit world through dreams, visions, and ceremony. There are some artists who consider themselves messengers between the spirit world and the physical world that we live in. You'll see a lot of symbols more than text and words. You'll see animals that represent clients, teachings, or spirit helpers. You'll notice the various amount of colors that represent spirits, land, water, or even memories. There's a lot of in-depth knowledge, shared cultural teachings, and oral history within all of these pieces of art. In this video, we look at an old form of traditional art craft making, to me, which would be defined as prestigious and elegant. Not only is this style of art visually appealing, it has a strong, rich, and oral history that people only learn by asking the artists themselves. We want people to understand that the connection to the land and water goes beyond just access to get for sustenance. Our connection to the land is incorporated in our traditional crafts because the material originates from the land and the waters, such as hides, rocks, shells, tree bark, animal bones, furs, red willow. Pretty much anything that connects us to the land has an oral teaching of life, community, and family. The common understandings that we have amongst all nations is that we offer thanks to those plants and animals. We show and give appreciation to what Mother Earth has to offer us. There are plenty of forms of native art, such as painting onto various canvases, such as material, rocks, rawhide, beadwork for earrings, bracelets, necklaces, leather and hide for belts, pouches, moccasins and mucklucks, sewing ribbon skirts and shirts, regalia, pipe bags or medicine bags, woodwork for totem poles. But in this video, we focus on the traditional art known as porcupine quill work. Just like this porcupine quill box is made by late Rebecca Trito. This style is one of the most intricate, delicate, and valued pieces of art. This floral porcupine quill box is over 30 years old. It's made of birch bark, sweetgrass, and porcupine quills. A piece of art like this could vary between two to five thousand, sometimes ten thousand dollars. It all depends on the intricateness of the quill work and the time put into it. There are other old traditional forms of birch and sweetgrass work, such as these placemats and trays. This style of art was used for everyday living objects, such as pot holders or even harvesting baskets. Also, artists used to make picture frames of birch bark and red willow, or even tiny little birch bark canoes that were usually held for keepsakes. As culture enriches our lives, it allows people to reimagine indigenous culture by learning about how art supports individuals on their healing journey by expressing feelings, emotions, and their self through traditional arts. Learning culture is by doing things such as listening and engaging. Having you experience indigenous culture through our series allows you to reimagine culture beyond the hardships and intergenerational traumas that have stemmed from recent histories. Exploring the art of indigenous people allows you to look deeper into the ways of living off the land. It will give you an insight as to why there is a strong connection to the land and why is it, is it natural for us to protect the lands and the waters. We want you to experience and reimagine indigenous culture through a colorful lens, the vibrant arts, such as quill work. Before we get started in the quill work demonstration with our guest artists, we'd like to invite you to join us on a few adventures of harvesting birch bark, sweet grass, porcupine, and also get to see our artist on how she uses natural berries to color dye her porcupine quills. All the material harvested for these videos was used for the upcoming demonstration. Let's go check out the harvests. In talks with our upcoming artisan, I have summarized information shared in regards to the traditional harvesting of the natural elements for her craft work. Next is harvesting the porcupine. She only collects roe kill because it's taught to her by her late father is whatever you kill, you eat. And you don't kill for no reason. So to her, being on a search for roe kill is more exciting. When you find porcupine, you use your tobacco and say miigwech to that porcupine for offering a spirit to you. You either pluck it on the spot or you would pick it up and lay it down somewhere else. Since it's damaged by hit and run, you would want to inspect it to see what quills are best to harvest, more or less damaged. You use gloves to either avoid the poke or simply avoid the blood and guts from the animal, and you start pulling the quills out away from its body. There are different sizes and thicknesses of quills, and you can pull and arrange them by size or just pull everything and place in a box and sort for later. Different quill size can be used for different style of art such as quill boxes or earrings. Once you have the quills, you want to clean them by placing them in hot water and soap. This will kill off any bacteria and order. You don't want to soak too long because you will ruin the quills. Then you give a quick rinse and allow it to dry.
When you're looking for birch bark, there are certain times of the year when birch is best picked and certain times of the day. However, these are lessons that you will learn while spending quality time with the elders and knowledge keepers while out on the land. You want to look for a birch tree that has a good solid piece without any nubs, branches, or damage to it. You simply grab your knife and run it through and score it on top and go downwards to the end spot. And once you have the top sliced a bit, then you cut down. You simply use your fingers or the knife and go underneath the birch and peel back and roll all the way until you meet the first cut. Some birch is harvested at certain times of the year. Some people will harvest enough birch to last them all year for all their craft making. So there are, there are harvesting te techniques that help preserve the birch all year by usually keeping it flat in a dark, cool spot. This way it does not dry up or curl up too quickly. Next, there are traditional harvesting of sweetgrass. Although sweetgrass can be used for smudge, it is used largely in craft work too as edging or borders. Once again, prior to picking, we offer tobacco and give thanks. There are plenty of grass and weeds that look similar to sweetgrass, so you need to know what you're searching for. It is said to see the shininess and feel the smoothness on the front side, light rough feeling on the back side. You'll find red roots and you can smell the sweetness of the grass. You pick as much as you like, but the elders say do not overpick and only grab what you need. Some people will grab the roots or not. There are different harvesting and pick picking techniques. To those who grab the roots, they usually spread the roots in other areas for regrowth, or some simply break the root so sweetgrass continues to grow in abundance in that area. Here are some beautiful, shiny, fresh harvested sweetgrass. After picking, you want to clean it out by removing the yellow burnt stems. You want to ensure that it's all nicely green. You boil water, and you just let a bundle sit in hot water for a short while, just for a simple wash. You damp the sweetgrass to remove excess water and let hang dry in a dark, cool spot until you're ready to use it for craft or smudge. Our artist has used blackberries to traditionally dye the quills that she will be using. Usually around the berry season time, a lot of people harvest very berries for eating or infusing its natural colors into their craft work. You simply add the berries to a pot, add water, let roll boil for a few minutes, then simmer down for about 20 to 30 minutes. After boiling, you simply strain and rinse the berries and then you re-add the berry liquid into a pot with the porcupine quills. Let simmer for about 45 minutes. Time will vary depending the desired color or shade that you want and let dry on a towel. This is the final outcome of the traditionally dyed quills with blackberries. We have here with us today an indigenous artisan who will be showing her craft, and her name is. Ani Nimki Quendashakas Megas Adodem. My name, is, my English name is Joanne Shawana. My native name is Thunder Day Woman, and I am from the Eagle Clan. I was born and raised in Wikimakong, Ontario, which is located on Manitoulin Island. Thanks, Karina and Joanna, for your introductions. We're excited to have Joanna to join us through this journey of educating about Indigenous art. We just finished a brief exploration of harvesting birch bark, sweetgrass, and porcupines. Next, Joanna is going to take us on her journey and show us her style and technique of traditional art that is vibrant, colorful, and rich in culture. Let's go explore the art of porcupine on birch bark. This is the birch bark I'll be using and I'll be tracing this little um, sample that I did. I'll be tracing it out and I will be making earrings. I have cut out my earrings, traced the flowers. I've got my purplish porcupine quills which I dyed with blackberries. I'll be sorting out to the size that I need and on the other side is my green quills. Um, 
I will use that as a leaf and a stem. So I'll be sorting these out. And here's my two little water bowls. Water needs to be hot. So here we go. Here's my flower. So I'm going to start working on it. I usually put a little cardboard at the back of the birch bark. So um, give it more secure, um, secure the birch bark. So I'm going to poke a hole. And I'm going to use the tweezer to pull the quill out. So there's two ends to this. Uh oh, where are we? So you have the, the little tip, then you have the black one. The section I'm using to put it through the hole is the very thin tip of the quill. So here's the stem of the flower. Now I'm going to be working, finish the leaves, and then do the purple flowers. Well, not quite finished. I've completed one part, one earring, well, quilted earring purple two um three purple tulips but also this is the stuff that we're going to cut and you need to be really careful to cut these so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hold this just hold the quills at the back cut them but this is the front part of the earring and the back part, as I mentioned, either I will use a birch or just use a some kind of leather at the back. Well, I've secured this earring. I'll be clipping these cl using these bear claw clips. Um, the earrings. So my next step is I'm going to sew sweet grass around it in the middle and the birch bark. All this sweetgrass will go around and a finished product birch bark sweetgrass earrings, along with a, a necklace to go with it. Thank you so, so much for supporting us in this project. I'm really grateful. I'm sure Joni is really grateful as well. I really admire your craft, your art, your work, and the effort well, you put into it. So it's inspiring also. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. I do my best to, to assist or show what I make and try to explain the best mm -hmm. I can how I, what I'm working on and how I'm doing it. So it's, I'm learning. I'm also learning. And thank you for having me. When, after using a set of dye, do you ever reuse them for a new batch of porcupine quills? Um, reusing dye for your quills. I do save my dye. I put it away. I still have some stored away. Um, I do reuse it. It'll still turn out the same color. But if I have the dye, like let's say over a year, I'll just dump the dye out and start a new batch. How do you preserve the porcupine quills? Storing the quills. I have porcupine quills here that's back like over 20 years. Wow. Um, 
They were used from my my grandmother. They were from my grandmother, my mom, and my ex mother in law. So those quills are like over twenty years old, and I'm and we I still use them. And I only stored and I stored them in a container. Should a person be bothered about any infections if they get pricked by the quills? Or are the quills poisonous? All the years that I've been um, taking quills out of the porcupine, yes, I do get poked, but I've never got any infection from it. Usually when you get poked, you just kind of twist a quill and pull it out. All right. I just want to say thank you and Chimiguetch for our artist, Joanne Shawana, for joining us today and showing us her beautiful artwork of quill. And thank you for taking us on the journey of you harvesting your own birch bark, your porcupine, and your sweet grass. All of it has been a, quite the learning experience. And I really hope everyone has taken away something new today about Indigenous culture and our art. Feel free to join us because our next video is we're going to wrap everything up and we're going to provide you resources and information on how you could learn and connect with Indigenous communities around your neighborhood. And yeah, thank you everyone for joining us from Culture Days and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye, my pee. <laughs> Bye, my pee. <laughs>